Adjustment layers are... are <laughs> Welcome to 30 days of Photoshop. We are on day four, adjustment layers. Hey there, welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace. You can find me on flurn.com where we make learning fun. And here in our 30 days of Photoshop series, we are talking about adjustment layers, which are one of my favorite ways to edit photos in Photoshop. So to start off with, what are adjustment layers? Adjustment layers are used to make changes to your images without affecting the original image data, making them completely non-destructive. You can change things like your exposure, colors, and light levels on either a specific area or photo or the entire image. In this video, we're gonna go through the most commonly used adjustment layers and show you how easy it is to improve a photo with just a couple layers. We got a great tutorial, let's jump into Photoshop. So here we are, let's go ahead and open up our sample image. We are on adjustment layers. Don't forget, you can actually download this on flurn.com. Just follow the link right down below. So let's go ahead and hit open and we're gonna click on F for full screen. So to start off with, there are a few different ways to make adjustment layers in Photoshop. You could go to layer, down to new adjustment layer, and here you have a list of all the adjustment layers you can make. You can go to window and down to adjustments, and here we have all the adjustments with little icons. And you can also go right down to here to this little circle, looks like a moon cookie, circle that's half of its light, half of its dark. And here we have all of our adjustments as well, including some fill layers up at the top, like solid color, gradient, and pattern. Now, for the sake of keeping everything consistent, we're just gonna go through our main menu here. So layer and then down to new adjustment layer. So brightness and contrast, let's go ahead and hit okay. Now this is one I don't use a ton because we can basically do very similar things with curves and levels adjustment layers. But if all you want is a simple brightness or contrast adjustment, this is a great way to do it. So very straightforward, you can click on the auto button if you'd like, it's gonna go ahead and calculate everything about your photo and give you what it thinks would be the best case scenario. Now I'm gonna go ahead and hit undo here and that's gonna put it back to its original state. So as you can see, you can adjust your brightness of the photo as a whole and your contrast of the photo as a whole. Now I actually think that auto did a really nice job here. So let's go ahead and go back to auto and take a look at what we've done. So this adjustment layer creates a layer. It creates an adjustment layer that we can turn off and on at any point in time. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna just turn this off and back on and we can see how it affects our photo. Now, the other nice thing we can do is change our opacity. So if we like this effect, but maybe wanted to have it a little bit less, we can simply lower the opacity and it's going to just have less of an effect on our photo. Of course, we can use a layer mask as well to have this only be visible in certain parts of our image. And we're gonna use that as we move forward. Now, moving on to our next adjustment layer, we'll go to layer, new adjustment layer, and over to levels. Now, levels are incredibly powerful along with curves. We actually have an entire episode coming up soon on just curves and levels. So we'll go through relatively quickly here because we're going way in depth very soon. So. With our levels, basically, let's go ahead and expand out our property window. We have options to change our black point, which will basically make anything to the left of this area black. Our white point, which will make anything to the right of this completely white. And our midpoint, which will take your central values and either make them darker or lighter. And you can see, for instance, here, I have some more de definition in my sky, and I could use this along with a layer mask to add some information into the sky. So let's go ahead and do that. Now I've made my central areas a little bit darker. I'm gonna go ahead and use my layer mask, but I don't want this visible everywhere. So we're gonna hit Control or Command I, which is gonna invert our layer mask. It's gonna go from black to white or white to black. So now it's a black layer mask, meaning it's completely invisible. Even if I turn the layer off and on, you can't see it. So if I use my brush tool, let's go ahead and use our brush tool and paint about 20%. There we go. As I start to paint white right here on my background, you're gonna see I'm able to get back a little bit more of that detail in the sky. All right, and if there's anywhere you don't want it to be visible, simply paint black on your layer mask. Incredibly easy to do. So black where you don't want it to be visible and white where you do want it to be visible. Okay, and there we go. We just added a little bit more information to the sky. 
super, super easy to do. All right, let's go over our curves adjustment layer, which is coming up next. So we'll go to layer, down to new adjustment layer, and over to curves. Now, curves and levels are actually very similar. They're just two different ways of editing the same information. So here I can take my black point and I can make it a little bit lighter if I want. I can take my black point and make it darker. I can take my white point and make that a little bit brighter, or I can make my white point a little bit darker. And of course I can take my midpoint and make that a little bit brighter or a little bit darker. Now with curves and levels both, I can also edit different color channels. So for instance, I can go to my red channel and add more reds to my image or take away reds. I can do the same thing with my green channel, add more greens or take away greens. And I can do the same thing with my blue, add more blue and take away some blue. All right, well in this case, let's work on our sky a little bit again. We're gonna add a little bit of blue to the sky. And this time we're just gonna hit Control or Command I on the layer mask there. And with our brush tool, I'm just gonna paint white on our layer mask. And this is again, just going to add some blue to our sky. That's gonna color the trees just a little bit, which is fine with me, because we're actually gonna color them completely in just a few minutes. There we go. So we can see we've made our sky both a little bit darker and a little bit more blue. Okay, let's go back to our blue channel. You can change these at any time, by the way. Anytime you wanna make a change, simply click right here on your adjustment layer. In this case, you can just go back to your blue channel and I can even say more blue or less blue. Very, very easy to do. Okay, moving on, we're gonna to go to layer, down to new adjustment layer, and we're gonna to go to vibrance. Now, vibrance is really great because it includes both a vibrance slider and a saturation slider. The vibrance slider will basically increase the saturation of your images, but it's gonna avoid skin tones. So if you have an image with people in it, you should use the vibrant slider. If you don't have people in it, then you can use the saturation slider. But you'll see if I go too saturated, you'll see how the reds and the skin tones start to look very unnatural in this image. That's why anytime you have people in your image, you don't wanna use your saturation slider. There we go. You should use your vibrant slider instead. And here we go. Go ahead and crank up that vibrance. Looks really cool. All right, looking really good. And of course you can mask it in or out. I'm just gonna use my layer mask here to just mask it out from my sky a little bit because we actually already made our sky a little bit more blue. So it was kind of going a little bit too much. So I'm just painting black on the layer mask here where I don't necessarily want this vibrance to be visible. So you can see I'm kind of stacking these adjustment layers up. Each of them can be used for different areas of your photo or just affect your entire photograph by itself. Okay, moving on. We're gonna to go to layer down to new adjustment layer. And now we're moving to hue slash saturation. Let's go ahead and hit okay. Now hue saturation allows us to change colors in our image. And you can see it's extremely powerful. And most of the time you don't wanna just change all the colors in your image. So let's go ahead and target a color. I'm gonna change from master, we're gonna go down to yellows. And then I'm gonna choose our little eyedropper here to actually click on our subject's pants. So it's gonna change that color. Okay, now moving over here, I actually wanna pull this a little bit more towards this side. Okay, make them a little bit red, a little bit magenta. Now in this case, you're gonna see that it's gonna affect quite a bit. Okay, it's affecting much more than just our subject. So what we're gonna do is click on our layer mask and I'm gonna hit Control or Command I to invert the layer mask. And then we're just gonna paint this visible on our subject's pants. So we're just gonna paint with white on our layer mask, making this area visible. So again, white will make things visible on a layer mask, black will make things invisible. So we targeted the orange. In this case, it's not gonna to try to affect colors like you know the sidewalk and things like that. But because the skin of our subject is very similar to this orange color, there we go, it is gonna to try to color that. So we have to make sure that we're not coloring everything in the image. That's where this layer mask comes in handy. So we can just say, all right, this is the only area we wanna affect. There we go. Allowing us to just paint this area in with the layer mask and have just the color change right over here. All right, 
And you can see this really doesn't take that long because I've targeted that color. There we go, fantastic. I don't have to be incredibly precise with this. Mostly I just have to avoid our subject's skin because her skin is a similar color. There we go, and right down here. Now, if you do paint over your subject's skin a little bit, like I did, <laughs> not a big deal. Just hit X on your keyboard to switch between black and white. And now I'm just painting black on my layer mask to hide this adjustment layer. Okay, so white to show adjustment layer and black to hide it. Fantastic. So we've changed that color a little bit. Now I wanna do one more thing here. I actually wanna change this. I wanna bring these colors of like the um, plants to be a little bit more vibrant as well. But in this case, I think I went a little bit too far. So let's go back to our reds. Maybe I'll just bring our saturation down a little bit and bring it a little bit more this way. Okay, now let's grab another hue saturation adjustment layer. So let's go to layer, new adjustment layer and over to hue saturation again. Okay, and this time we're gonna choose a color. I'm gonna grab my eyedropper and go up here and then we're gonna change our hue and saturation of that color up there. And we're gonna see it's kind of affecting everything again, but that's okay. Again, we're just gonna invert our layer mask by hitting Control or Command I. And now we're just gonna paint it visible right up here. All right. Very, very cool. So you can see basically, let me just fade that in a little bit. Basically, I'm able to color a bit of the background and a bit of my subjects shorts to be relatively similar. All right, there we go. And let's go ahead and make them a little bit lighter too. Pretty cool. All right, I'm having a fun time. Now we're gonna make one more. We're gonna go to layer, down to new adjustment layer and hue saturation. This time I'm gonna go to my greens. Let's choose our little eyedropper tool and go to the greens. And we're gonna crank up the saturation of that because it's maybe bring our brightness down and the saturation up a little bit more. We're creating like a super saturated fun image. So I thought it'd be fun to do the greens as well. All right, there we have. And I'm just gonna make sure I turn all these layers off and on and make sure each of them is affecting our image. So we've gone through about half of our adjustment layers and our image looks really cool. We've actually done quite a bit. Let's go ahead and turn these off. The best thing about our adjustment layers is you can turn them off or on at any time and change all these settings. So let's go turn these all off. There we go, here's a before. And as I start to turn these back on, you can see each one of the individual changes that we've made. I think we're looking really good. So we're gonna go to layer, down to new adjustment layer, and we're moving on to color balance. Now with color balance, you can adjust colors in your shadows, midtones, and highlights. For instance, if I wanna take my midtones, maybe towards a little bit of cyan, maybe a little bit of green, and a little bit of yellow, we can change this to a little bit more of like a warmer type image. Or if I just hit undo, go to a little bit of blue and a little bit of magenta, maybe a little bit of red, there we go. I can change this image to a little bit more of a red image. And of course I can do the same thing with my shadows. If I wanna bring my shadows towards blue a little bit and maybe my highlights towards yellow a little bit, I can get a little bit of a duotone image out of it. Okay, I kinda of like that, but it's too strong. So we're gonna just change our opacity go down to about 50% there. There we go, that looks really cool. So let's continue going down the list, layer down to new adjustment layer, and we're gonna go to black and white. Now here in black and white, it does what it says, makes your image black and white. But the cool thing here is you can choose the light levels of the different colors in your image. So you can, for instance, make just the greens really dark or the cyans really light or dark. So you have a lot of control over the different colors in your image and how they appear in your black and white. Now, of course, just like everything else, you can lower the opacity, okay? 
So maybe if you wanted like a kind of desaturated image, you could just do this. Now, in this case, I'm just gonna turn this off because I kind of like all the color in this image. But of course, I just wanna show you these adjustment layers. Next, we're gonna go to layer, new adjustment layer, and down to photo filter, which is a really fun way to just add a simple adjustment. You have a lot of filters built in, like these warming filters, and you can increase or decrease your density. We're gonna to go to our cooling filters, which just cool your image down a little bit. Turn that off and on so you can see the before and after. And then you have some other fun ones that are built in, like a green or a deep red. All right, I think that green was actually kind of nice. So you can turn this off and on and see how it affects your image. And of course, <laughs> I recommend keeping things on the subtle side. Let's go to layer, down to new adjustment layer, and we're gonna go to our channel mixer. Now this is one of the least commonly used uh, adjustment layers in my opinion. It has a very strong effect, but it's a little bit tough to use. So uh, basically you can choose your different color channels and you can choose how much, for instance, in our red channel, how, how much you're gonna shift the green channel towards red or the blue channel towards red. Now you can make some big adjustments to your image here Really, really interesting stuff, but it is a little bit difficult to get the hang of. So if you're just starting off, maybe play around with this, but this isn't one of my go-tos. Obviously you can see you can make some big changes, but generally I'm able to do everything that I want without using a channel mixer. I use this more for like special effects and things like that. Let's go ahead and turn that off. We'll go to layer, new adjustment layer, and we're gonna go down to color lookup. This is where we can actually load some different looks. So we have different looks that are loaded within Photoshop, okay? We can go ahead and click down the list of here. These are also known as LUTs, okay, or L-U-T-S. So these basically create different, completely different looks by processing different colors in different ways. Now you can actually download LUTs on flurn.com. They're included in a Flurn Pro subscription. So if you're interested in getting more of these, we have tons of them available on Flurn. Okay, now generally I like to do my own coloring, so I don't use LUTs a lot, but if you do like, let's say you just like, oh cool, I like the crisp warm look. Well, this is something you could just add to every one of your photos and get that look. All right, moving on, we've got a couple more here. Down to layer and new adjustment layer. Uh, invert is pretty straightforward. It literally just inverts your image, which can be kind of fun, especially for like graphics and things like that. Okay, moving right along, we've got Posterize, and this will actually reduce the amount of levels in your image. Posterize or Posterize, you can say it either way. Uh, this will reduce the amount of color levels in your image. So if you go up, you'll get more and more detail, and if you go down and down and down, you'll get less and less detail. And this can be fun for creating graphics and things like that. Let's turn that off, down to New Adjustment Layer. We have our Threshold, which basically does something very similar but just with black and white. So it takes a point and makes everything to the left of that point completely black and everything to the white of that point completely white. Okay, good for graphics and it's also helpful for analyzing complex compositing as well. Okay, let's go to our new adjustment layer. Almost done here. Gradient maps are incredibly fun. They're a great way. Let's go ahead and just click on a few uh, gradient maps here. They're a great way where you can actually colorize and color tone your entire image. And we have a tutorial later in this series on using gradient maps to color tone. So in this case, uh, pretty crazy here, but if I were to lower the opacity of this, you can see we are actually able to color tone our image in a really interesting way. You just pretty much don't wanna use these at full value. So there are a lot of, uh, a lot of gradients that come preloaded into Photoshop. And here we have some of the ones that we've made specifically for color toning and other gradients that come with Photoshop. All right, so you can see these are pretty cool for things like color toning. Okay, layer down a new adjustment layer. And last we have selective color. Here's where you can take specific colors like my reds and I could say give it more or less cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. So if you wanna do subtle adjustments to your colors, this is a great way to do it. For instance, we can affect our greens. I can say more yellow or less yellow in my greens. And you can see it is pretty subtle, but it is making changes in my image. 
So especially things like skin color, where I wanna maybe just change it ever so slightly, selective color is a great adjustment layer for doing that. So we've loaded every single adjustment layer. Let's go back through them here. I'm actually just gonna group all of these. So let's hold shift and click on all of them. Hit control or command G to group them all together. And we're just gonna call this adjustment layers. Now, I can turn this entire group off and on and see the before and after. And the cool thing about all this is because it's non-destructive, if I maybe wanna just lower the opacity of the entire group, I can get something that's like halfway. So it's a little bit of the before and a little bit of the after, creating a little bit more of a realistic effect. And I actually like that quite a bit. I think it's done really nicely and a great fun use of adjustment layers. Thank you so much for watching 30 Days of Photoshop. If you haven't already done so, go ahead and sign up. You can do so by following the link right down below. You'll get a calendar with a list of events, daily email reminders of all the topics here in 30 Days of Photoshop, as so well as our sample images, and you get exclusive bonus material just for this series. I hope you're enjoying it so far. Let me know in a comment right down below. Thanks again. I'll flirty later. Bye everyone.